Hi and welcome back to the channel. Um, today, although I've got a mod light in front of me, we're going to have a uh, tool update review um, video. This is something new I've just bought. Uh, it's not not a, a whole tool in itself, but part about a, a tool that that will help me um, do things easier. So that's why the model's out because I want to start by explaining things I've something I've done in the past that's been tricky. So this is the body for Dolgok that we're working on at the moment. Um, destroying the Batman and Friends model to build a, a better model. Uh, but what you might remember is that originally this model had coal on both sides and I got rid of the coal on this side by using my uh, Unimat 3 lathe setup as a milling machine and I milled off the top. Um, I'm not sure I took a photo of that but I will try and put up a photo here of me doing the same thing to the model of Tally Lin I did. Um, and it's quite tricky, I mean, figuring out a sensible way to hold this thing in the lathe and then uh, and then milling the coal off is is quite tricky in itself, but it's made more difficult with the way that the milling column uh, works. So let me show you that. Now I've taken the head off the milling column. So this is the head. We might need to raise the camera up a bit to give you a bit more space to see what I'm talking about. There we go. We'll try that. Uh, so this is the head off the milling column. Um, so as you can see the column would go through here and it works a bit like a drill press you push down on this uh, and the, the head moves down obviously uh, the the mill would be in the here the milling bit or the drill uh, drill bit if you're just using this as a drill press and you know it's it's kind of pointing away from you and you pull it down and it, it works like that I mean I think you've seen there's some videos um, on the channel of it being used when I was doing forming the metal for the 16 millimeter Hudson Hunslet. I was using it more as a press than a drill. But anyway, um, that's the the milling head. Now the problem with it is, is it you know it works quite nicely, but as a as a as a drill. So you pull it down, the the bit goes into the work, and then you let it go, and it pulls back up. If, however, you want to do a milling operation, then either you have to slide it up and down the column manually to get it to just the right height, or you have to kind of pull down on the handle to where you want it to be, hold the handle in place, and then you use an Allen key to tighten that screw there, and that locks uh, the spindle down. Um, it basically just squeezes this part of the front together uh, around the, the central piece, and that stops it moving moving up and down. But it's, it's far from ideal. Um, it also means that you can't kind of move it up and down by set amounts um, it's very difficult to adjust this gently I mean I can undo it if I can get it undone uh, but as soon as you start to undo it, it starts to, the spring starts to pull it back up um, so do, doing it small amounts is tricky um, the rest of the lathe is really nice and easy I mean this is the the tailstock um, and it's got a nice nice handle um, that's graduated where every mark is 0.1 of a millimeter so it's nice and easy um, to rotate this and as you rotate it the tailstock gently moves out so if you're drilling using the tailstock on the lathe you can turn out precise amounts of depth um, for on the tailstock and all the, the cross slide um, and the kind of all the other um, axes on the lathe have that and it works really nice but the milling column doesn't and I'm guessing that's because um, a lot of people would have used this mostly as a drill, um, not necessarily as a mill, um, but they did originally sell what they called a fine feed attachment for the mill, and that's what I've managed to buy. So obviously they don't make these anymore, so you have to find kind of second-hand versions, and they can run um, expensive. I've seen these on eBay um, a number of times, but they often go for 75, 80 quid. Um, I saw this one, um, and it looks good. Um, and I put in a, a, a much lower offer and fortunately the seller and I came to an agreement that was a lot less than the kind of usual 75 uh, to 80 pound asking price. So this is what turned up. There's the, there's the kind of fine feed part itself, um, this knurled geared cap, um, a bolt and a washer. Um, and initially it wasn't clear to me how this all went together. Um, the manual I've got also, I think, is originally German translated into English, which also doesn't necessarily help. Um, but essentially what happens is the handle on the milling column comes off. Okay, that's a bit stiff. 
just the way it kind of fits in. And what you have essentially on the end of this is the teeth and they go into the grooves, if I can kind of get this to do it now. Um, there are grooves on the back of the quill. You can just see them there. So as you turn the handle, it moves the quill up and down as it bites in and out of the, the grooves. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so that's how it goes up and down. So what we want to do is a way of basically rotating this by finer increments. Um, so this goes together in a funny way. Essentially this piece has this little bar protruding through it. Um, this slots into this tiny little dimple on the side of the head. It's, it's quite a tight fit the first time I fit it. Um, I'm assuming because nobody's fitted one on this before so the paint was into the hole a little. Uh, but once I've once I've done it once, it, it fits nice and easily. Um, and then you have to take the handle apart. Um, it's not necessarily straightforward. And, well, it's not obvious from the manual, but there is a uh, three millimeter Allen key in the end. So if you undo that, oops, if I undo rather than do uh, lock up, right? So if we undo that a bit further, there we go. Then the handle comes off, and what we get left with is just the circular piece with the the gears on the end. So then you take the knurled uh, piece and you slot it on. And what you have to do then is slide the handle through the hole and it locks into one of these gaps. So you can see then that in the knurled piece, there's a gap. Um, I've not undone this far enough. It's a bit of a tight fit. Let's do it a bit further. There we go. Um, oh, it's tighter fit than it looks. Right. Um, so that's now through far enough. You don't want the handle to protrude really for any further through uh, than just locking in place um, because otherwise it will it will bind against the, the rest of the part. Anyway, so once the handle's in, you can just tighten the screw down um, so it doesn't come out like that. I just want to make it so it's tight. Uh, and then the handle just kind of goes back in to the milling column as it was before. It's always a bit of a tight fit, as I said. Uh, there we go. So that's in. Um, and now you can see this piece is on an angle. So currently I can still use the handle. Um, but if I pull it down so far, I can then rotate this piece down a little bit like that. And you heard it kind of click into place. And that's the teeth on the nailed wheel here clicking into a worm um, gear inside the fine feed. Now, obviously it's all kind of a bit sprung and tight now because it's all holding on this spring. Um, so the fine feed attachment is kind of attached and held in place um, with this bolt. It's a standard um, five millimeter um, Allen key. The same as used basically on the rest of the, the Unimat, nearly all the Unimat bolts are the, the, the standard five mil one. Um, so that's now held in place, locked onto this, this nailed wheel. So now obviously handle doesn't move. Um, <clears throat> what you have now is this dial at the front. Now it's a bit difficult to see on the camera, but it does have markings on and just like the handle on the tailstock, um, they're in 0.1 millimeter increments. So I can now take a Allen key and I can rotate round um, so that it's a bit tricky but you did not too bad. Um, depends on the Allen key you've got. Mine's got a long handle on this one, so it's difficult to see. But if you watch now, as I push it round, it gently, is it rotating? Which way is it rotating? Yeah, oh, no. that way, I'll just go that way. Um, it's gently pulling the handle further, further down. Um, so this handle is getting more and more towards the bottom and more of the tail, the things coming out. So this means now I can move this up and down um, in increments of 0.1 uh, millimeter. So when I want to do uh, precision milling, if I want to like, you know, mill a slot of a certain depth, I can now um, set this up so that the mill is in the, you know, the right position to start with. And I know how far down I've gone. Um, so it just adds another, another little feature to it. I mean, this was the problem when milling, milling these things was I could start off milling the coal on the top, but then when I wanted to move down and mill a little bit more off and down and mill a little more off, I had to reset it by hand um, across from the edge. And it was really, really tricky to get it to do it right. This is really nice because it just, um, I can just 
turn the handle um, and it will just go down in tiny little increments. Um, as I say, you have to make sure that the handle here isn't of the thing isn't shooting too far, otherwise it'll lock onto this. Um, and you have to be careful that you're not at the full extent of travel in either direction, um, up and down for the for the shaft, because otherwise you can try turning this and you're just going to chew up the the gear here as well, this this knob gear. Um, but it's quite good. I mean, as I say, once it's um, once it's all fitted, you can leave it fitted because again, if I undo this. I can just let it twist upwards out of the way um, and now this is again free to free to move so I can leave this up I can tighten the screw Oops. There we go. so it's not going to drop down onto the gear now um, and it's all in position that means when I, you know this turning this doesn't do anything now which is why it's free to free to move with my hand um, but it means it's easy to to set up and I can still, if I want, you know, use the fine feed to set the depth and then still access this ball if, well, if I want here to lock it down um, to try and remove any any vibration, etc. Uh, when I'm using it. So I think this is going to be great if I want to do um, any more milling. And <coughs> as I said, there's no more, no more milling to do on this one. But spoiler alert for a future um, video on Build the Earl. I've been looking at some more of the parts and I have a feeling that I might have to replace um, another part or two and they would potentially be e the, the things I might need to replace would be potentially easier to make um, if I mill them so that was part of the the motivation for for this purchase um, in the in the hope that you know I can already go kind of forward and backwards with uh, with nice precision on the lathe when I'm milling but the up and down um, was 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 essentially impossible with this original setup. Um, so hopefully, this has been a, a a very good purchase. And as I say, now I know how it all fits together. It's really simple to use, um, really easy. Um, so if you have a if you have a Unimat three with the milling column and don't already have one of these, then you know if you want to do any milling at all, just from just from playing with this, having not even used it in anger yet, um, I would say it's a really worthwhile thing to keep an eye out for uh, and pick one up. Uh, I think it's going to make a huge difference to to my ability to use the mill rather than just using it as a as a drill press. Um, so that's all for today. As I said, spoiler alert: I might have to make some more parts for the Earl, um, but that will be in a video. Um, I assume next week, maybe we'll we'll see. I don't know quite how I'm going to go with projects that have multiple projects on the go all at once. I don't know what will turn up in the video next week, but um, hopefully you enjoyed that and um, thanks for watching.